I'm Dave Swift, and I review a new lifetime deal from AppSumo almost every single day of the week. My reviews are considered to be some of the most thorough and honest reviews you can find online. They are also extremely long. So this is the taco truck roundup where I review the exact same products, but instead of doing it in 30 or 40 minutes, I do it in three to four. I've got four great deals in this week's roundup. So let's stop wasting time and get right into it. First deal I want to talk about is called super. Okay. This is a client portal tool that allows you to manage client projects and client communication. The good news here is you'll get unlimited projects and unlimited task management. They have some nice customizable templates that you can use for different style of projects. And if you get the right plan, you can even white label it and add your custom domain name. There are no direct integrations with other platforms. Everything is done through embeds, which I'm okay with, but there was a commenter who made a good point that it wasn't working for him. We'll get to those comments in a minute. Uh, some other negative things to point out. There are just very limited design customization options available. Like in terms of the templates, they all kind of have a similar look to them. You can go in and change the background colors and get things to look how you want. But overall, it has a look and a style. And if that doesn't fit with your brand, well, that would be a deal killer for many. However, I like the tool a lot. It had a few user interface quirks, but overall, I thought it was a very well thought out and a really usable platform for a client portal. I like that it was streamlined and focused on that one tool and it wasn't really in that tool being client portal. It wasn't trying to do everything for your business. It's a client portal and I respect that. All right, I'll tell you my favorite score, but first let's head over to the comment section. All right, so here's that comment I was mentioning before from Sean Olivia's 9148. We need real integrations, not iframe embeds. That means our Coda or Notion is made public, big no-no. Why would you password protect a portal and then have all of your apps be public? Now, I think that is a good point, but I would say that you don't necessarily have to password protect the portal. You could just make those links inside of, like if you're using a third-party application, it's gonna require your contact to have access to that, right? So you have to add them, you know, grant access to whatever document that they need. So they'll have to log into that service. So that means you could, rather than embed it, just have a link and then require them to log in. I think that's the easy way to work around that. I don't know if there's any portal in the world that's gonna allow you to have a real integration where someone can authenticate through your portal for something like Notion. I just don't think their API goes that deep. It's not a super okay thing. That's more of a Notion thing. And I don't really think Notion needs to build that, to be honest. It is really interesting sometimes to see the differences between commenters. Like I got this one, a negative comment here saying the client facing stuff looks cheap AF. And then just like a little bit after that, we got another comment saying super okay looks like Notion on steroids. So is it either cheap or is it like super powered? It's the eye of the beholder, I guess. That's why there are so many software applications, different strokes for different folks. There were quite a few comments about comparing super okay to other platforms. Here's one from Justin asking about super okay versus Moxie. My choice would be super okay in that instance. I just like how it's more streamlined, but we're talking about client portal, whereas Moxie does so many other things. And then here's another comment saying, hey Dave, if I got Sweet Dash, is Super OK really that necessary? I think Sweet Dash can do the same thing and even more. I agree, same thing I said with Moxie, it can do the same thing, it can do even more, but I like the fact that Super OK is dedicated to client portals. I kind of take the opposite of an Elton Brown approach when it comes to my software selections. If you don't know, Elton Brown is a very, you know, kind of famous cooking personality. He started off on television, done some internet stuff. And one thing he always said was no unitaskers in the kitchen or the only unitasker is a fire extinguisher. Well, I kind of take the opposite approach for software. I tend to prefer more unitask tools so that I can easily swap tools in and out if I decide I want to try something new or if a feature is lacking in one part. Well, I'm not going to stick with the entire platform just because I'm you know, basically committed to that platform now. So I like Unitaskers. I think it allows me to find the best tools. And I also think the best tools tend to be focused on solving one specific problem rather than trying to do literally everything. But you know, your mileage may vary. There's actually a lot of really positive comments. You guys like this video apparently, and I appreciate that. Thank you for those comments. It definitely keeps me going. Uh, I wanna point out the phrasing on this one here. It says, I appreciate how you apply the right amount of OCD when being picky about issues. I love that. All right, so that is super okay. I gave it a 7.7 .7 out of 10. Definitely go check it out if you can still get your hands on it. 
Tool number two this week is video to blog. This is a tool that converts your video into a blog post with AI assistance. Now, just hearing the description of this kind of makes me sleepy because I feel like we've all seen enough tools that do kind of a mediocre job of this. And I was dead wrong about my assumptions of this tool. It was far more impressive than I thought. The overall process is very simple. You either upload your video or you link over to your YouTube video, and then it downloads the video, transcribes it, and then proceeds to create a blog post. Now, the really cool thing is that it doesn't just have to do the blog post. It can also add in screenshots from the video, and the screenshots are remarkably good. It'll also create all of the metadata that you need for SEO, and it will even suggest social media posts to promote your new blog posts. Amazing. Now, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows for video to blog. I did run into some issues with the videos downloaded from YouTube not generating the correct thumbnails. Like, it couldn't take a picture of the thumbnail. And the solution that they provided was, well, just upload the video yourself then. And I had to redo the blog from scratch, but that's really no big deal since you're just uploading the file. It does add a little bit more to the workflow to obviously have to upload your own video file. And the other downside is that it doesn't have access to your YouTube description. So if you spend a lot of time getting that description right with the correct links, well, you'll have to copy and paste those over as well. I love there's the direct integration with both WordPress and Ghosts, my two favorite blogging platforms. So if you're interested in that, check out the full length video linked in the description. Now let's head over to the comment section before I give you my final score. Okay, the top comment from this video is from Jason Zorn saying, try it with a shorter video, 10 to 15 minutes in duration. For context, my video was about 32 minutes, I believe, from the one I recorded in my review. Uh, and he says it'll up the score. It's gonna give you better results with shorter videos, which kind of makes sense. It's gonna be a smaller amount of data that the, the AI has to hang on to. So he says, rarely impressed with these kinds of tools. Many of the bugs you surface, I believe, were due to the length of your videos. Uh, and he said, they're, they're good. Thank you, Jason. Then he goes on to say he's tried it with several shorter videos and it does a lot better job. So he agrees that there are some bugs, but overall it's very, very impressive. Throughout the video, I was comparing video to blog to the existing workflow that my team uses, which is based around Claude projects. And quite a few of you mentioned that you wanna see a video on how I use Claude uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, like what other projects am I using? So I'm considering making a video like that. If you wanna know more about how I'm using Claude, definitely leave me a comment down below and encourage me to make that video. And one final comment here from Clown World 1984 I would prefer blog to video. People do not read anymore. Probably too true. Uh, the honest reason that I will generate blog posts based on our videos is for easy searchability. If you wanna know what part of a video has certain content you want, you can search and then you can easily find that inside of the video. That's basically the only reason I do it. I don't think anyone reads them from beginning to end, but if you do, let me know. So overall, I gave video to blog 7.9 out of 10, a very, very good score for an excellent tool. I gotta say, AppSumo is on a heater this week. I believe that is the lowest score for the rest of the video. There are some really, really killer tools out there right now. Let's head into the next one, which is Save Day. Save Day is a bookmark manager and web content organizer. And to call it that is selling it so short. It is actually an incredible tool if you think about it in the right way. Because on the back end, Save Day has got this entire LLM learning capability built into the back end. So really anything that you save or bookmark becomes your source of knowledge, becomes your source of truth, and you can ask it questions. Basically, it is outsourcing your brain with the exact sources that you deem to be credible. So you wanna be very conscious about what you bookmark. You probably don't want to bookmark things that are speculative if you're going to be relying on this as your second brain, but this is all something that you will work out as you engage with the tool, I, I assume over months and years to really build up this solid base of information. All of this works through a Chrome extension, by the way. So you can gather anything that you see on the web. There are other ways to get data in, but I think most people are going to be using Chrome. I go through a lot of suggestions in pretty good detail in my video, but the thing that really stood out to me is there's a few instances where we need more user feedback. When you click on things, 
We need it to tell you what it's doing because sometimes it just sits there and doesn't do anything at all. And you also need more customization in terms of the visuals, how you're organizing your saved data because a lot of times you just wanna scroll through and, and have something catch your eye in kind of a Pinterest style, but you can't customize the thumbnails that it chooses and you can't customize the cover images for your collections of different themed saved bookmarks. So those things need to be addressed rather quickly, but they're not huge issues. So let's go ahead and head to the comment section before we do the final score. So overall, lots of positive feedback for this one. We've got Big Podcast One saying, I've been using this for three to four weeks and had good experiences so far. They learned a little bit from watching my video. We've got Future Nine saying, I really like this. I might let my reader or Readwise subscription lapse in favor of this. I totally agree if I was debating between those two tools right now, I would definitely go with the LTD for save day. And kind of in that same vein, we've got Black Jays 13 here saying this is like an upgraded pocket or reader wise. Uh, I totally agree. I would definitely prefer this over pocket as well. The only real concerns or negative comments I received was about the price. So here's one from I am Tallboy saying that tier three is pricey. Now I get that it's $309, I believe is the, the price of tier three, which is not a small amount of money. But when you consider that this is a tool that's gonna be $30 per month, uh, you do that for a year and you've already paid for that tier three subscription. So in that case, I think it's a very reasonable price. Now, the other thing I heard was people concerned about security and privacy. Now, Save Day actually goes out of their way to explain that they're trying to be as secure and uh, private as possible on their website. So here's the Save Day website. I'm in the footer right now. And what you wanna look at is this page right here that says Our Promise. And they go into pretty good detail here about what they're gonna do with the data. They're trying to get some certification to make sure that the data is as secure as possible. But with that said, this is the internet and things do happen. Just about everything that you can imagine has been hacked at one point or another. So is anything really secure? I mean, if we're going to be worried about our bookmarks being hacked, boy, I don't know. At least they're putting it front and center, addressing it, knowing that it's going to be important to people. So I gotta appreciate that. Okay, so my save day final score was an 8.2 out of 10. If you are an existing Chrome user specifically, I'm not sure I will switch to Chrome just for this application, but I'm kind of tempted to. But if you're already using Chrome, this is an absolute no-brainer. 8.2 is a very high score for me. All right, our last tool of this week is Chat Playground AI. This is a tool that lets you use multiple LLMs at the exact same time, up to six at the same time to be specific. So you can enter a prompt, get all of the outputs from six different LLMs and choose the one that has the best result. There's even a mode to mix them all together to give you a super output. The part of Chat Playground where you're engaging with multiple LLMs at the same time, they call the Playground, but there's actually a ton of other AI tools bundled right into this application. The one that's probably most impressive is going to be their Chrome extension. And that leads me to the first con, really. You have to be using Chrome even to see the web application. There were some comments on that. We'll address them in a minute. But yes, you need Chrome to even log in, which is kind of crazy from my point of view. But if you are a Chrome user, it seems like that is the browser to be using these days and anything else is an upheld battle. I am never one to shy away from a battle, by the way. But let's say you are using Chrome and you wanna check out this tool. Installing the Chrome extension allows you to take Chat Playground AI around the web with you and anywhere you want to maybe respond to a social media comments or craft a reply to an email or write inside of your favorite word processor, as long as it's in a browser, you'll be able to do so with the help of any of your favorite LLMs. It even has vision so you can take a screenshot of whatever you're looking at and then ask the LLM a question about it. There's a ton of other tools bundled into this, like the ability to chat with a PDF or automatically summarize YouTube videos. Overall, it's really, really impressive. So over in the comments, we got this one here from Cordium. I hope I'm saying that right. It says, why is this exclusive to Chrome? Is there a reason? Is there something that Chrome can do that other browsers cannot? And my response was, I have no idea. Well, we actually got Chat Playground themselves to reply Chat Playground team here, we are exclusive to Chrome because of our AI browser Copilot feature, which is achievable only as a Chrome extension. Not really answering the question about why I can't log in using another browser, Firefox, Safari, something like that. I can't even log in and use the Playground feature. It requires that Chrome extension. 
and you don't get in until you have it installed. We got NEA Studio here saying, long story short, they all have limitations. I've used them all extensively for complex projects. There is one task that Claude couldn't resolve for me, but Gemini did, and there's also other models. So yeah, I totally agree. Usually Claude is going to be the best, but not always. Sometimes Claude, I mean, honestly, the results are not 100% consistent with any LLM. That's kind of, they're predictive, and so there's variance to them. In general, I like Claude right now, but ask me again in a month, and who knows what that answer is going to be. Chat Playground actually chimed in on this thread as well, saying that I like Claude as well, but Playground serves as a way of getting more information because one AI model is not always going to have what you are looking for. Totally agree. So final score, I gave Chat Playground an 8.1 out of 10. Like I said earlier in this video, a lot of super high scores this week. All great tools, all tools I would definitely recommend at least investigating further and find out if they're gonna be a good fit for what you're trying to do to build a business on the internet. That's gonna do it for this week. Hit me up in the comments with what your favorite deal of the week was or ask me a question that might have sprung up as a result of watching this video. Now, don't forget to click my AppSumo link before making a purchase that helps support this content. And also I've got full length reviews of everything I talked about. You wanna go deeper, I've got 30, 40 minute reviews of every single tool in this video. Those will be in the That LTD Life playlist that is linked in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Check out clientamp.com where you can sign up for my free email newsletter. My name is Dave Swift and I'll see you in the next review.